Hey guys, it's Chinu at InnoKinetic again. Welcome back. We have got some news from Lotus that we wanted to share with you. We're pretty excited about a couple things that they've just announced recently. First of all is the Amira pricing and a few more details. And then they've actually shown off their new Leva or lightweight electric vehicle architecture, the new architecture that they've developed with a grant that they received from the UK government for their future EV vehicles. So it gives us a little bit of an additional snapshot of what the future holds for Lotus. So we're pretty excited to share that with you today. So where do we want to start? Let's start with the Amira pricing. The first edition Amira will come as a V6 supercharged. As you guys know, it's slated to start arriving next spring, spring of 2022. They say that it's a world car, so all markets should be getting the car at the same time. Typically in the US, we've always had and seen some delays. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll see those first edition cars next year. I do know that they're only bringing a few hundred into the US in that first year, and I think they're all spoken for. The pricing that they've released is 75,995 British pounds or approximately $104,000. These first edition cars are always going to be loaded to the gills. They're going to have all the options for the most part. They have released the fact that there's going to be a few different little options here or there, but for the most part, the car is going to be loaded with all the luxury features, all the comfort features, and probably have some optional performance features, right? But I think the truth of the matter is this price point, as they should do, is going to be at the higher end. And what we understand is there's going to be a base Emira coming in the following year, which will be priced a lot lower. And we've seen some speculation suggesting that it may be closer to $80,000 US. And that may be a car that frankly doesn't have too many of the options. But for the purists out there, it may be actually the perfect Emira for driving pleasure. So anyhow, I'm waiting for year two. That's going to give me the options to spec the car exactly the way I want. So I'm very excited to see what will happen over the course of the next few months and what additional information will come out. Official U.S. pricing is supposed to be coming out sometime in late September, early October. So there's that. The second bit of news that I wanted to talk to you about is this new LEVA or LEVA, which is an acronym for Lightweight Electric Vehicle Architecture. So Lotus started work on this apparently last October, so just over a year ago. They were given some grant money from the UK government to really start developing their chassis architecture for EVs moving into the future. And so they've now shown us a couple different designs, one that has what we would call a slab battery. So in other words, a battery that's kind of like a skateboard in the floor of the car and the other that they refer to as a chest battery. So in other words, a battery that's sitting behind the driver's seats, much like a mid-engine configuration, where the battery is actually stacked up a little bit higher. So what are the two differences between these two? Well, the slab battery is going to have probably better weight balance, right? It's going to behave more like a lot of the EVs that are out there right now. This chest battery concept, I'm pretty interested in it because you're gonna have weight distribution that is gonna be closer to what we're used to with a mid-engine car. So final weight distribution will be interesting to see where that lands, but I think the driving dynamics are gonna be fundamentally different and therefore maybe even more fun. Much like a 50-50 weight distribution car feels different from a 60-40 weight distribution car, I think these two architectures, the slab and the chest, are gonna deliver some different driving dynamics. And you know that Lotus ride handling engineers are gonna fine tune these cars so they behave differently, but yet still like Lotuses. So I'm really excited about that. These two architectures give them even further flexibility to then deliver two seat cars, two plus two cars, four door cars, crossovers, SUVs, four-door coupes or sedans, I should say. They've actually released their internal code names, Type 132 for kind of a Porsche Cayenne-sized SUV that's expected in 2022. The Type 133 is supposed to be a four-door that's to be released in 2023. And then Type 134, which is supposed to be another small SUV or crossover, which is slated for 2025. And then finally, the Type 135, which is supposed to be another sports car, 
coming in 2026. So it looks like these different cars will come with a range of single motors or dual motor setups ranging from 470 horsepower up to 900 horsepower. Interestingly enough, they've also talked about the battery sizes potentially for these various layouts and architectures. That slab battery layout, they're talking about having maybe about a 66 kilowatt battery, which if we compare that to other cars on the market, the Model 3 has anywhere from 50 to I think 80 kilowatt hour batteries. The Porsche Taycan has 79 to 93 kilowatt hour batteries. So this slab battery at 66 is gonna run somewhere where Model 3 is, but on the low end of where the Taycan is. The chest battery actually looks like it's gonna offer even more capacity. So anywhere from 66 kilowatts all the way up to 99 or almost 100 kilowatt hour batteries. That now puts it in similar arena as the Taycan and the more powerful Teslas that exist. So that is gonna be very interesting for us from a performance perspective, because God knows the instant torque of battery is pretty addicting. Driving a Model 3, I gotta tell you, it's a wonderful day-to-day -day driver. So I'm super excited about these Lotus EVs that are coming and very excited about what Lotus is gonna do from a handling perspective because another thing that they also mention with these different architectures is the wheelbase, which we all know also affects how fun or how comfortable a car can be. So the wheelbase that they've been talking about in the two-seat configuration is a minimum of 2470 millimeters. As a comparison, the Elise is about 2300 millimeter wheelbase. The Amira is gonna be 2570 millimeters. So we're right in between an Elise and an Amira in wheelbase. So that tells you it's still gonna be a very compact car. The larger architecture can be 2650 millimeters or larger which is bigger than the Amira and what you would expect to see in a crossover or a four-door vehicle of some sort. So it looks like Lotus has pulled another one of their great engineering feats and come up with a really cool architecture, much like this extruded aluminum chassis that they innovated for the Lotus Elise and have been able to use that for many years. This new Leva looks like it holds a lot of promise for those Lotus fans like us and particularly those of us looking for fun, lightweight cars. I think one of the other things I didn't mention is that Leva subframe is 37% lighter than what's in the Emira. So they really are focusing on finding weight savings because God knows the batteries are heavy. So there it is, guys. We're excited about the future here for Lotus. We hope you enjoyed that video. Definitely leave some comments below. Give us a call with any questions, and we'll see you next time.